Hey, I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. The 2021 Ford F-150. Limited hybrid without launch control. Not bad. Yeah, pretty damn good. Horsepower and torque. 430 horsepower, 570 pound-feet of torque from a 3.5 liter Power Boost V6. What does Power Boost mean? Basically, we have a hybrid in here. And the hybrid's a really big deal in here because that allows for a lot of cool gimmicks and stuff. Yes, this basically turns it into a mobile generator, which is really cool. Okay, that's gimmick number one. Let's rifle through all of them. So you plug that in into the very back in the tailgate. We've got a whole bunch of different plugs back there so you can power a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, apparently you can power your TV so you can have a full out tailgate party, assuming you're social distancing because we're in a weird time right now. And tools and all that stuff. Yeah, We're so just... if you bring it to a job site, like this is very functional. Except my buddy who works on job sites says that's a cool idea and all, but like you need to move generator to places you don't want to run like 300 feet of cable but i guess for like a it one man job it depends what kind of contractor you are and then on the tailgate you can also cut wood and clamp it in and we've got measurements and stuff like that yeah and you can also pop open your beers because yeah there's built-in bottle openers or your dad's old-fashioned root beer and then beers and just like the previous f-150 they actually kept the tailgate steps so you can get up there just like you did in the previous generation do you think that's gonna last the test of time of 10 years honestly yuri i'm not sure considering mine doesn't work and yours is 10 years old yes but it also has extremely high mileage and what's cool about the tailgate is it's damped and it's power so you can double click the button to drop it raise it it'll give you a beep when you do that and if you push it up with your knee or something say you have something in your hand halfway it'll automatically finish the rest and you can close it from up here as well to the left of the steering wheel. That is really cool and in the tailgate wars between all these trucks, I think this is probably the most practical one and best looking one because we don't have like a weird slit in the middle. There's no like weird steps. There's no like work benches and stuff like that. It's a functional system. And then also this generator, it'll take power from the hybrid battery in here and if it runs out and needs to charge that back up, it'll run the engine just enough to get that going again. Yeah, that's why this is basically just a mobile generator, which is really cool. Three point turns was not a gimmick that they included in this because this has the worst turning radius ever. Yes, not very good. More cool stuff. In the back seat, the seat folds up and then you can actually fold this thing out from the bottom to have another compartment for storing things. Is it flat? Yeah, it's flat. Well, there you go. Load your wood in here in case you don't want to put it in the bed. I think it's more of like a divider for like dirty boots or something, but I might be completely wrong. And we should probably mention that this F-150 is all new, like literally all new. Oh yeah, totally redesigned. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep going though. And then up front, the next cool thing is that the shifter can fold all the way down when you're parked. Well, maybe. It does. Yeah, all, only when you're parked. <laughs> and then you can unfold this armrest right here to be a flat workspace for your laptop or your papers. Yeah, and this makes perfect sense. Like you would have your lunch here, you can eat your snacks, you can have your laptop here, you can plug it in because we also have a port. It's a really good innovation that nobody's thought of that who knows how it'll work and who knows how reliable this shifter mechanism will be after a couple of years. Okay, and then you can also lift it all the way up and store a whole bunch of stuff there. And the next gimmick is Max Recline. So it's an option on this and I can go full back and basically have a sleep. I'm not gonna do that since we're driving, but this will go full flat, yeah, which is really cool. You know what other car does that? What? My Honda Element. Oh, there you go. From the very first car review we ever did, we showed that as well. So you can have a nap in here. So when you're done working with the boys, you have a nap with the boys. So that's actually pretty much it for general gimmicks, but the overall interior in here is a huge step up and the overall truck is a huge step up over the previous generation. Yeah, this actually has a whole bunch Bunch of technology that I want to finish up on before you drive starting with this gauge cluster it is like one of the nicest smoothest coolest gauge clusters I've ever seen from any company yeah like outside of trucks as well like cars that's a really good gauge cluster especially switching between the modes that's where you see such nice graphics where most companies screw it up and make it lag and Ford's and Lincoln's have been pretty notorious for gauge lag which we've complained about in basically every video so this is a substantial upgrade the only thing that sucks is you've got your attack on the left your speedo on the right, but there's no like tack tack. It's kind of like weird and you got these big bubbles in the middle. Your speed on the right. I want speed in the middle, but there's no way to set that up. And you can't get rid of that weird tack thing on the left. But if you click your menu button and go up and down, you can go down to a comm screen, which shows the truck in the middle. And then you can also go to off road, which shows your angles and stuff, which is pretty cool, but you can't really customize it past that. Yeah. And then like you said earlier, it's really cool to go through your actual drive mode. So what do we have for drive modes, Yuri? We have sport, eco, tow haul, normal, 
slippery, deep snow sand, and mud and rot. And on top of the actual animations being really cool, it also changes the colors of the gauge cluster. Yeah, 10 out of 10 job on the gauges. 9 out of 10, because I don't like that weird tack thing. Okay, so 9 out of 10? 9 out of 10, that's, <laughs> a, that's a pretty good one. I'd say so. And then moving on to this infotainment, this is also really impressive because, yes, it is Sync 4, but the resolution's really nice on the screen. Yeah, it's high res. We've got Apple CarPlay. Do we have Android Auto? Yes, we do. But Not that I can find out, because I have an iPhone. <laughs> and Apple CarPlay can be wireless or USB. They give you the option. And I believe wireless Android Auto as well, but that's just what I'm stating, I believe. <laughs> and we also have really nice 360 cameras in here. You can also make the backup camera the entire screen, which is a first, I think, for Ford. But unlike Chevy's, you can't push this camera button while driving and have it actually show anything. It just says, no, I can't do that. Yeah, so it's nice to have that hard button to do that, but it's kind of useless because you can't do it while you're driving, which is when you want to see your trailer hooked up. And as for hard buttons, we got volume knob, tuning knob, a couple hard buttons down here, but what's good is that the very bottom, you can see your audio, your phone, all that kind of stuff at the bottom permanently so you can always get through all your menus very quickly. It's a very functional system. And it does rewind satellite radios. There you go. And the last bit of tech that I really got excited about, this has lane centering when it comes to your lane keep assist and cruise control. Which works really well and I haven't seen another truck, anything in this class that has anything remotely as close to as good as this works. Yeah, it's very nice and it'll give you warnings if you don't keep your hand on it like pretty much everything else. And the graphics for that are cool pretty easy to understand and it'll show you like what the speed limit is on the right tack too when you're doing it overall great job this would be a very nice daily driver uh, and last piece of tech it's got automatic parking and stuff yeah which you need at your job site when you're plugging all your stuff in with your boys <laughs> uh, <I don't> know. <laughs> so i also want to talk about this general interior the general exterior and the overall fact that basically every body panel on this whole thing is new should we also talk about these cool t-shirts we have limited edition at teespring.com slash store slash the straight pipes i think we should and maybe subscribe to our channel consider it you can't hold the brake without it going to the electric motor yeah i know oh there we go brake boost this thing rips pretty hard okay, man. but it's wet outside yes you had is. traction all the way off and it still didn't peel out like crazy and how much torque does this have uh, almost 600 pound feet something's up something's intervening yeah it's definitely on i did see something else flashing so i believe the stability control is off even though we held the button for as long as possible so it says it's fully off even though it's actually not fully off. Yeah, and compared to that Silverado truck that we drove that's probably on Patreon right now, not live yet, like, that was just like Peel Central. Yeah, you definitely can't like rip this thing around, which is a little weird, but I also kind of get it because this is a hybrid. Hybrids do a lot of weird things. They gotta like computer generate all the way that the torque gets delivered. It's, it's a very complicated system. But what's nice is that it's not a plug-in hybrid. It's just a normal hybrid. So you don't have to do anything. And like sometimes you'll be driving, it'll be regen. Sometimes it'll be full electric. Sometimes it'll be everything together. It's pretty cool that it takes care of it all by itself. Yeah, that's why this is literally a mobile generator. Like it just powers itself, which is fantastic. Like this is the, like the most brainless version of a truck that's still a hybrid that you can get that still powers all your stuff so let's talk about the looks first because we haven't talked about that at all and every body panel is brand new okay it looks like a mid-cycle refresh yes it kind of does with actually. Uh, slightly different headlights i'd like to start with the headlights yeah so the headlights look pretty cool they are split up they look like the drls are just these massive lines even though they're two separate lights and uh drl stands for daytime running light in case anyone didn't know that but i do like the look because even on your Raptor, the Raptor Retrofit ones, they come up and around. This is just like that extended. I'm excited to see what Raptor Retrofit's gonna do for this gen. I'm excited to see what the Raptor looks like in this generation, because nobody knows. Okay, next thing that's different is the grill. Yes, there are apparently 11 different grill designs along the entire F-150 lineup, which I think is way too many. But you know which grill I'm most excited for? The fake Raptor grill. The fake Raptor grills showing up on eBay soon. I can't wait to see how they look. <laughs> tagged onto here that stuff's the funniest thing especially because he's got a raptor every time i see a fake raptor I'm like yo jacob raptor he's like shut up it's not a real raptor i definitely don't say that i just laugh but the grill does kind of look shelby gt 350 ish i think where it kind of like curves up at the top and the bottom do you not see that uh, okay i guess i see what you're talking about yeah everything has like more of that curvy style instead of like the straighter style and this is the limited, so it is the top trim, which traditionally gets a lot of chrome. This one's all satined out. It looks really nice. Yeah, you can really notice the satin on the door handles from the side view. Yeah, and then we also have power running boards, and then these wheels are pretty cool, but they're not too special. Yeah, just average wheels. But what would be the Continental recommended tire for the new F-150? The Terrain Contact HT. But then as for the side view, have you noticed from in here, 
that this part that dips down isn't as aggressive as it was on the last gen. Yeah, they definitely smoothed it out. And from the outside, it just looks more chiseled, but smooth, like nothing too crazy. Like literally looks like a mid-cycle refresh. Yeah, looking from the side, it just looks like the previous one. And even looking from the back, especially, because the taillights to me look pretty much identical. Yeah, I mean, they still look good, but yeah, not much difference going on. But then we've got the satin metal that goes all the way across the tailgate again. Yeah, and it looks really good. Basically what they did is they took every previous model that they had and just updated it just enough. And then they got the exhaust sticking out on the right. Should we hear what it sounds like from the outside? Let's take a listen to the power boost. Um, doesn't really sound like it's got too much power. So overall, looks wise, pretty much just the next generation of Ford F-150 that pretty much looks the same. Yeah, they didn't screw it up because they couldn't afford to because it, too many people buy F-150s. Yeah, and people who buy F-150s don't want it to look like a Cybertruck and don't want it to look like a GMC EV Hummer. Yeah, exactly. And I think they, they made a perfect decision. Yeah, they really did. Now we just gotta wait to see what Ram does. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just really excited to see this Raptor, like very excited. And what, I wonder if they're gonna give it a V8 because I asked them and they didn't give me an answer, so who knows? They're gonna have a four cylinder and a manual, a rotary and a manual transmission it'll be the echo boost from the eco boost so now let's talk about this interior just generally first thing I noticed is the steering wheel is massive like disproportionately large first thing I noticed was all the blue in here yeah it is definitely pretty blue in here I, I like the color it's nice did you blue yourself <laughs> I blew myself and then we also have a bunch of carbon fiber which definitely does look fake but it doesn't look out of place I swear man we got like four more years of this carbon fiber trend and then it's gonna be on to something else I'm just surprised at how much of it there is in here and then we also have this really cool knurled material along a bunch of the car yeah all the materials have been significantly improved from the previous generation the first thing I noticed is a lot of plastics have been replaced with like leathers and different textured materials that look very premium especially like real metals and like knurling except for the volume knob and tuning knob which actually feels kind of cheap to me like the cheapest part compared to a sequoia or a forerunner like that's so much nicer feeling than this but it's really nice that we still have all the hard buttons and apparently you can use this touchscreen with your gloves just so you know all you construction glove wearing guys yeah yeah just construction gloves just like concrete fingers i don't know if you can wash concrete off the screen though so how about the visors are they nice quality oh yeah the visors feel great <laughs> they actually do feel great three two one full pass and we got a nice big sunroof. And then we also have a wireless charger down here. We have USB and USB-C, which is really nice. And then that cover above it also looks very premium. It does have the fake carbon fiber, but it also has the knurled metal. And then we also have this secret upper glove box that has a button to the left. Yes, which is all new. Fake carbon fiber. You think the King Ranch is gonna have it stamped on wood? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got cup holders up here and back here. These ones fit a cup, those ones fit a cup, and we got some ambient lighting that lights up water bottles. And how about these seats? They're comfy. They are pretty comfy, except they have this weird thing right here where you can adjust it and like add extra comfort, which is actually kind of cool. It's kind of how like their headrests tilt forward and then lock back. We can do that here, which is cool. Cause when we saw this, we got scared that it was gonna be like the Lincoln seats that are super adjustable. <laughs> yeah, the perfect position, which we They're can not. never get into a perfect position in. And then you also get massage in here, which is really cool. Yeah, generally these seats, this interior is very good. Huge step up from the previous generation. And back seat room is also really good. And then I also really like this material on the seats, this light colored material. Yeah, yeah, the material looks cool. The color choices of this compared to like, I think that one GMC that we had that was like those weird color browns, like this is next level goodness. Yeah. So now let's rip this thing through cliche corner in the sport mode. Not too hard because it's kind of wet. And I mean, yeah, it's a little drifty here and there, but feels really good. Lots of body roll, feels like a truck, but it's generally very comfortable is the first thing that I notice. And kind of the only thing I notice about the driving experience because this 600 pound feet of torque nearly doesn't really feel like that. It is very, very torquey like once you're going, but like, there's quite a bit of downshift lag and turbo lag because we do have 10 speeds to go through. It's just generally a little bit slower than I would have expected. But if you're in the right gear, then it's quite quick. What I noticed was that the traction control was doing a really good job of keeping you from sliding or anything, which is good because it'll keep a lot of people safe in treacherous conditions. And it is fantastic to have a large hard button to turn that off, even though it's not really off. Yeah, and it <laughs> didn't really do anything. So hit me with a U-turn before you get to the towing. Uh... <laughs> That's embarrassing. Like GFC's got a car with a crab lock and this can't do U-turns. Oh yeah, it's, I don't know. I haven't driven another car or truck with a terrible turning radius like this. 
And the one thing that I'm noticing right now is how sensitive the throttle is. It's extremely sensitive. So sport mode is, I don't really recommend sport mode. Like eco mode's probably the mode that you want to drive this thing in. I like it in eco, the nice green gauges. You know, I'm here to relax in this nice hybrid truck. Yeah, it is nice that it is responsive, but it's like too responsive because then that doesn't really feel as responsive as the transmission should be in sport. And then, oh, this sound system, pretty good. Yes, it is Bang & Olufsen. That's all we have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's next? The towing. In this configuration, it can tow 12,700 pounds if properly equipped. And because we don't know much about towing, check out TFL. They're probably gonna have like a million videos on this. Bro, I know everything about towing my one jet ski. And the Defender, which I am very excited to see what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> and we have this F-150 for a very short time, so we can't go in depth on everything. We can't live with this for a week like we normally do, so we are gonna do another review on this at some point. But these are all of our initial thoughts on this. Yeah, I feel like we pretty much nailed it. We pretty much nailed everything. We've been doing so many cars. We're like, we're good at feeling them out. I mean, we're good at reviewing cars. Uh, we're like literally not the worst. But more time always helps. Yeah, yeah. So let's get to the price. Let's get to the price. This one is approximately $93,000 because it is almost fully loaded. And this is an American vehicle and it's a pre-production vehicle. Canadian. That's a lot of money, but it's a top trim basically, so. Well, it's the first hybrid F-150 and I think the fact that you literally have a generator built in. For a good amount of people, that's probably the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah, and you can get that on lower trims. You don't have to spend $93,000 to get that generator portion or even a lot of the stuff. So you can get an F-150 as cheap as $33,000. I mean, that's where they start, but it's not gonna have the generator. You just keep tacking stuff on or you can get three of those instead of one of these. I overall like everything about this. My only one complaint would be like a couple different looks for the gauge cluster. That's it? I, I'm pretty sure that's it. That's a pretty good complaint. So let us know what you think of the new F-150. Can you not wait for the new F-150 Raptor? Is it gonna have a V8? And watch some of our other truck reviews. Click right here. Probably the most viewed video, the Shelby versus the Raptor. Maybe.